This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my in-depth review of the new Space Marine Codex. Just released today. So as my name is Jay. I'm speaking in rhymes for some reason. It's all good. So welcome to part two. Uh, in part one, I covered the new special rules. They've lost combat tactics, but they've gained chapter tactics some weapons and stuff, but now it's time for part two. And in part two, I'm gonna be covering the HQs. HQ part two, more rhyming. So HQs, now for most of these sixth edition codices that have come out, the HQs have actually been kind of the least interesting uh, area since they basically keep the same HQs. There haven't been that many new ones. And uh, they typically just go up and down 20, 25 points, maybe 30, some go up 30 points, some go down slightly. Uh, and typically they don't change very much, in my opinion. So it's not the most interesting section of a new codex. But uh, as always, we gotta cover it. And basically so far, just an overview of the new HQs. That's basically what happened. Most HQs went up or down, give or take 20, 25 points, some as much as 30. There are a couple exceptions. I remember uh, Tigurius is actually one of my favorite uh, changes in this codex, and I'll go over him in a little while. And as you're probably guessing, there are a lot of HQs in the Space Marine Codex. There are a lot of them. So we'll be going over, this might be a slightly long video. Now I went over the Warlord traits in the previous, um, I don't know if I went over the Warlord traits actually. Hmm. All right, might as well start off with the Warlord traits since I'm talking about Warlords and these are HQs. So Warlord traits. On a d6, you roll. On a one is Angel of Death. The Warlord and his unit have the fear special rule. It's okay, nothing too special since a lot of the game is fearless. Orcs, Tyranids, other Space Marines, all fearless. So, no, not the coolest one. Uh, the Imperium Sword, one use only. Declare your Warlord is using the ability at the start of your, one of your assault phases. Um, the Warlord and his unit have the Furious Charge special rule. That's cool. And until the end of the turn. So nothing amazing. Increase the strength by one. Cool. Nothing like game changing. Next one is Storm of Fire. One use only. Declare your Warlord is, is using this ability at the start of one of your shooting phases. For the duration of the phase, a single friendly unit from Codex Space Marines within 12 inches of the Warlord may reroll any failed to hit rolls. Become Twin Linked. Again, cool. Not really game changing unless you really want to kill something with a really heavy duty hitting squad. It's cool, one time use. Number four is Rights of War. When taking morale tests, friendly units from Codex Space Marines within 12 inches of the Warlord uses leadership characteristic instead of their own. That's great. Now that they've lost combat tactics, you really don't want to be falling back. Uh, you want to keep going, so that's good. It's good to use that one. Number five is Iron Resolve. When determining assault results, add one to your total if the Warlord is locked in combat. Cool. So it gives you a chance of winning, I guess. And number six, Champion of Humanity. This is the best one by far. If your Warlord causes the enemy Warlord to be removed from play, as a result of the challenge, he scores D3 extra victory points in addition to the usual amount earned for slaying the enemy Warlord in the scenario. Note that killing the enemy Warlord as a result of a sweeping advance does not award these extra victory points. So you have to kill him in a challenge, essentially. Yes, it has to be in a challenge. So that's cool. Because in these games, one or two points actually makes a huge difference in the game. Because if you can tie up, if you can get that, um, you know, three, if you roll a three, that's awesome because you get four points for Slay the Warlord. That's really nice. It covers an objective by itself. So that's great. So now that that's done, we will go to uh, the HQs. Now, this is the HQ section. And as you can see, it's long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of HQs because HQ is a busy section of the Codex, as always, because there's tons of them. We'll always they have to start off with Marnius Calgar, Ultramarines, he's awesome. Now he's gone up in points, he was 250 in the old Codex, now he's 275, uh, pretty much identical stat line as before, so we won't have to go through that. Uh, he has Artifice Armor, Power Sword, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Iron Halo, Chapter Relics of the Gauntlets of Ultramar, and uh, let me see about the We'll go to him. So he's right here. Marius Kelgar. 
Uh, he has gauntlets of Ultramar, and each of these gauntlets can be used as a melee weapon with the profile strength times two, AP two, melee and unwieldy, nice. Or they can be used as a shooting attack, 24 inch range, uh, it's a single shooting attack. Strength four, AP two, assault two. That's cool, an upgrade, he's the armor of Antilochus, which basically, this is really cool, is that the armor of Antilochus gives the suit, it's a suit terminator armor that does not prevent sweeping advances and includes a teleport homer. That's awesome. So if he's on the table, you can deep strike around him without scattering, and he can do sweeping advances, which is great because he's a combat monster. So that's good. He can perform sweeping advances. He's not limited by his Terminator armor. That's really good. You can give him his honor guard, and he's just in great shape. So that's cool. He has orbital bombardment, special rules, they shall know no fear. Ultramarine's chapter attack is obviously Eternal Warrior, God of War, independent character, orbital bombardment, Titanic might. Uh, so God of War, Marnius Kalgar, Cal oh sorry, and if Marnius Kalgar is in your primary detachment, he must be the Warlord. He rolls three times on the Warlord traits and chooses a single Warlord trait um, that he likes. That's pretty cool. Uh, God of War, they all, Marnius Kalgar and all friendly units with the chapter taxes Ultramarine special rule can choose whether to pass or fail any morale check they are called upon to make. There we go, so that's combat tactics right there. So with Mar Marnius Kalgar, they can, it's like the old combat tactics, they can choose to fail at any given point. Furthermore, if Mar Marnius Kalgar is your warlord, you may use a single combat doctrine ability twice during the game. That's what I mentioned before. You can use two of them for the combat, for the uh, chapter tactics. So that's great. And to Titanic Might, Marnius Kalgar rerolls failed armor penetration rolls against vehicles in close combat and can choose to reroll glancing hits in an attempt to instead get a penetrating hit. So again, he'll rip any vehicle to shreds. You must accept the second roll, even if it's worse than the first. Cool. Up next, Captain Securius, Tycho. He's cool. Tycho? No, his name is not Tycho Securius. It's uh, Kato Securius. Yeah. And uh, he's now 185 points. He's gone down by 15 points. Pretty much same stat line as before. Same war gear. Uh, he has chapter relics. He has uh, the Tal Talizarian Templist Blade, which is strength user AP3 melee. Coupe de Grasse, Coup de Gras. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Coup de Gras. Uh, he can make a single Coup de Gras attack with his Tempest Blade instead of a normal close combat attack. This attack has strength plus two and instant death special rule. That's awesome. He wants to take down a Tyranid monstrous creature. Dead. That's cool. Um, because of him, you bring him one Ultramarine tactical squad in, in the army that includes the Carius can have one of the following special rules at no addition cost, counterattack, infiltrate, scout, or tank hunters. Right to battle, Sicarius is on the battlefield. All friendly units of the chapter tactics Ultramarines, special rule, can use his leadership for any morale or pinning checks and surprise attack. If Sicarius is on the battlefield, you gain plus one to your reserve rolls. That's great. Just all awesome all around. So very cool stuff. Next one, Chief Librarian Tigurius. Now this is awesome, because Chief Li Librarian Tigurius was, uh, he was good before, but he's gone down in points. Now he's 165, he used to be 230, so 65 point decrease, that's awesome. You know, he's he's looking great right now. So he's got uh, power armor, bolt pistol, crack grenades, frag grenades. Uh, he has the gift of prescience. If your army contains Tigris, you can choose to reroll any reserve rolls that apply to units from the same detachment, even successful ones. Master Psyker. When generating psychic power, Sigurus may re-roll any or all of the dice to see which powers he knows. That's cool. So it guarantees him getting some really awesome powers then, basically. And uh, Psyker, he generates the psychic powers from Biomens, Divination, Pyromancy, Telekinesis, and Telepathy. And he's also a master level three, I believe. Yeah, he's a master level three. That's nasty. So that's really cool. And he's got the Rod of Tigurius. Uh, strength plus two, AP four, melee, mastercrafted force, concussive soul blaze. That's great. That's awesome sauce right there. Very cool stuff. Next up, we have Chaplain Cassius. Now, Chaplain Cassius used to be 125. He's gone up five points to 130. Still not bad. He's a chaplain. Uh, he is basically the same warrior as before. Let me just go to the next one. His chapter relic is Infernus. 
It is a bolter with Hellfire rounds, 24 inch range, strength one, AP five, rapid fire, mastercraft, poisoned two plus. So it doesn't matter if it's strength one because it's poisoned two plus. That's sweet, it's AP five. Or use a flamer, template, strength four, AP five, assault one, one use only. Cool stuff. Uh, his warlord trade is the angel of death. And uh, yeah, he is. He, special rules, chapter tactics, feel no pain, independent character, preferred enemy against Tyranids. That makes sense because he hates Tyranids. So that's good. And Zealot. Awesome stuff. Up next, we have Corsero Khan. Now, Khan used to be, again, 160, and he's dropped down to 125. 35 point decrease, not bad. Basically, same stat line. Oh, sorry. And going back to Tigreus, he actually has three wounds now. He used to have two wounds, but he's now three wounds. That's even better. So he's extra long living. He doesn't have uh, Eternal Warrior, but still. Uh, Corsair Khan, once again, pretty much same stat line as before. He's now 125 points. He uh, there's a special mounted assault if Corsair Khan rides Moon Draken. Bike squads of at least five models may be taken as troop choices instead of fast attack in his detachment. That's cool. That's very cool stuff. And uh, yeah, that's just great. So it makes bikes troops. That's cool. So this is bike squads. So you can have a, a bunch of bike squads and they'll all become troops. Well, that makes sense though. But uh, that's just awesome sauce. Great stuff there. So Corsero Khan. His chapter relic is Moonfang. Uh, it's a power sword. And it's strength user, AP3, melee, praise bane, which is, if Kusera rolls a six to wound, that wound has the instant death special rule. Again, awesome. You wanna take down a monster creature? Six, dead. No save. Dead. Dead. And his upgrade is Moon Draken, which is a the bike Moon Draken. Uh, it's a space room bike. When Khan is running Moon Draken, he has the Hammer of Wrath special rule, though he inflicts D3 hits with an attack with the um, Hammer of Wrath instead of one. Great stuff. Next, Vulcan Heston. So Salamanders, awesome sauce. 190 points. Now Vulcan used to be 190, and now he's 190. So pretty cool, stay the same. Uh, stat line, same as before. Uh, War Gear's the same, Chapter Relics. His is Gauntlet of the Forge, Heavy Flamer, that incorporates a, a, a set of digital weapons. He has Kassar's Mantle, which confers a three plus invulnerable save. That's nice, so he's a, a two plus three plus, because he has Artificer Armor. And Spear of Vulcan. It is Strength plus two, AP three, melee, Mastercrafted, two-handed. Nice, great stuff. Mr. Salamander himself. And his special rules, um, the one that's different than the normal ones is called C, but remain unseen. Shrike, oh sorry, Shrike, sorry. His is called Forge Father. If Histon is your warlord, all melta guns, combi weapons, and multi meltas wielded by models in his attachment have master crafted special rule. That's good. That's, uh, scary. Whole army of master crafted melta guns. Okay. Vulcan. Yeah. Scary. Next tip we have Shadow Captain Strike. Ooh. Basically, same stat line as before. He is now 185. He used to be Shrike, sorry. Not Strike, Shrike. I don't know if I said Shrike. He's gone down by 10 points. He's now 185. He used to be 195. His uh, chapter relics are the Raven Talons. Uh, they can be each used as a melee weapon with the following profile. Strength user, AP3, melee, mastercrafted, rending, shred. Again, they're Talons, they just whoosh. He's like Wolverine, that's pretty cool. And his special rule is see but remain unseen. Shrike has the stealth and infiltrate special rules. Before deploying, he may join. He may only join squads of jump infantry. Makes sense, he's a crazy jump dude. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be going with normal tactical marines because they're not fast enough for him. That's cool. Next, we have Captain Lysander. Ooh, Mr. Thunderhammer Storm Shield himself. Same stat lines basically before. Um, yeah, he's just nasty as always. He's 230 points. Uh, Lysander used to be 200, so he's gone up actually 30 points. 
Let's see if he's worth it. He's still probably worth it because he's probably one of the nastiest HQs in the game. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, special rules and they shall know no fear. Chapter tactics, Imperial Fists. Eternal, Eternal Warrior. That alone makes him really nasty. Uh, independent character. He has the icon of obstinacy. I probably mispronounced that, but still. Obstinacy. If Lion Xander is your warlord, all friendly units with the Chapter Tactics Imperial Fist special rule within him, 12 reroll morale and pinning tests. That's awesome. He has a Chapter Relic. It's a Fist of Dorn. Range, nothing. Strength, 10. AP, 1. Melee, concussive. Mastercrafted. Specialist weapon. Unwieldy. So, Captain Lysander has a Strength 10 AP1 Master Crafted Specialist Weapon. I'm buying him tomorrow. Let's just say that. These HQs are awesome so far. I'm liking what I'm reading. Up next, Crimson Fists, Pedro Cantor. So, Pedro Cantor. Again, same sound lines before. He has Dorn's Arrow, same as before. Let's look, read him up. Pedro Cantor. So he has a special rule called Oath of Rin. If Chapter Master Pedro Cantor is your warlord, all friendly models in Crimson Fist detachments. Oh, I forgot to probably mention. Uh, Pedro Cantor is 185. And he used to be Pedro Cantor. Uh, 175, so he's got 10 points. And if He's your warlord. All friendly models in Crimson Fist detachment have the preferred enemy orcs special rule. That makes sense, right? Because he's against orcs. That's cool. All of them. That's nasty. So you have an entire army. If you happen to be playing against orcs, your entire army could have preferred enemy against orcs. That's amazing. That's awesome. Furthermore, all such models from 12 inches of Cantor receive a plus one attack while he's alive. It's supposed to not apply to Cantor. And it's not cumulative with the other similar bonus from Chapter Banner. That's awesome. Again, awesome. Hold the line. If your army includes Pedro Cantor, friendly units of Crimson Fist Sternguard veterans are scoring. Ooh, that's awesome. Sternguard scoring units. Chapter's Relic is Dorn's Arrow. Strength four, AB four, Assault four, 24 inch range. Cool. He also has the Orbital Bombardment as he did before. Awesome sauce. Next, High Marshal Hellracked. Helbrecht. I don't actually know how much High Marshal Helbrecht was because he's a Black Templar. He's 185 points. I'm pretty sure he was about 175 in the previous. Maybe he's new. Grimald is definitely not new, so. Um, Helbrecht has basically the same stat line as every other Space Marine captain. 6, 5, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 10, 2 plus save. He's pretty cool. He's a Black Templar. So now we're getting to the fun Black Templar additions to this codex, because now welcome to the new bland codex, vanilla codex, Black Templars. But it's nice, you get a, you get a cool you know, weapon. So um, his special rules, Crusade of Wrath, once per game at the beginning of your assault phase, Helbrecht can grant all friendly models that have the chapter tactics, Black Templars, the hatred and fleet special rules until the end of the game. That's great, uh, end of the phase. Sorry, that's great. Awesome sauce. Chapter Relic, Sword of the High Marshals. Strength user, AP3, melee, Legacy of Dorn. Mastercraft, Legacy of Dorn means um, it gives him a charge bonus of D3 attacks instead of one. Nice, so he's a great close combat monster guy. Awesome sauce, 180 points, not bad at all. If you're leading a Templar army, him or Grimaldus. Up next, Grimaldus, 185 points. Once again, not a giant change in points, I'm pretty sure. Uh, same stat lines before. His independent special rule is unmatched zeal. Friendly models in the chapter Tactics Black Templar special rule within six inches of Chaplain Grimaldus have the Zealot special rule. Awesome sauce. He can have Servitors with the same stat lines before. And his special rule is Relics of Hell's Reach for the Servitors. Friendly models that, with the chapter Tactics Black Templars special rule within six inches of one or more Cenobite Servitors have the six plus invol save. That's great. Gives all your guys invol saves. Invol saves are nice. And they're 30 points apiece for a Cenobite Servitor. As before, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were. That's good. Next, we have an Emperor's Champion for Black Templar. And uh, maybe I should just make this video the named, yeah, and then 
Net part two will be the non-named HQs and elites maybe we'll do that because there's a lot of, yeah, maybe we'll do that because this is, there's just too many named guys in this, in this book, the named HQs. So uh, next we have uh, the Emperor's Champion, 140 points. And the Emperor's Champion, the same stat line as basically before. He's just a nasty close combat monster, two plus save. Uh, he has the Armor of Faith. And um, that gives him a two plus armor save and a four plus invol. Cool. Uh, he's a black sword, which is strength user AP2 melee master crafted. And he has some special rules, one's called Slayer of Champions. When fighting a challenge, the Emperor's Champion must choose a stance, either Smite of the Unclean or Slay the Heretic. All at the start of the fight phase, the chosen stance lasts for the end of the challenge. If you choose a Smite, Emperor's Champion has strength plus two, and his black sword gains the two-handed and unwieldy special rules. Cool. If you choose to slay the heretic, two wound rolls of six made with his black sword have instant death. Ouch. Ouch. So, yeah. Those are the, uh, well, let's keep going. Maybe we should keep going. I'll just go quickly over the non, you know, amazing ones. There's Chapter Master. Uh, let's keep going. You know what, Chap Chapter Master uh, used to be 125, now he's 130, got up five points. But he's still pretty good. He's got the same stuff as he did before. Same rules, he has orbital bombardment. And he can just, you know, take a Relic Blade, Storm Shield, bunch of upgrades. Uh, mounted Assault. If an attachment includes a Chapter Master on a Space Marine bike, bike squads of at least five models can be taken as troop choice instead of fast attack again. Sweet. So he's actually a cheap alternative to the HQ to make your bike scoring. That's nice. Uh, there's Honor Guard. And Honor Guard are 85 points for two Honor Guard and a Chapter Champion. That's a good reduce of price, I believe, as well. Honor Guard used to be 115. Uh, there's a Captain, 90 points. Sorry, I'm just going a little fast at the end here just because the length of this video is gonna be very long to render and to upload. So 90 points for a captain. Uh, he's not bad at all. Captains used to be 100, so they've gone down 10 points. Uh, same stat lines before captains, three plus armor. You can make him replace his bolter with a bolt gun. You can take a relic blade, a storm shield. Uh, for 20 points, which I'd highly recommend having 110 point with artificer armor. And you can take items, you know, and again, if a captain is on a Space Marine bike. Bike squads of at least five models may be taken as troop choices. So maybe the theme is troops. You know, maybe you want to take a, a captain on a bike if you're a White Scars army. That'd be cool too. There's a Terminator captain, 120 points. He's Terminator armor. That's cool. Command squad, 100 points. Uh, command squads used to be 115, so they've gone down three points of a veteran. Uh, you could, one, one veteran may take the following company standard or standard of the Emperor Ascendant. One veteran may be upgraded to a company champion, replacing your chainsaw with a power weapon and combat shield. So these guys are still pretty sweet. Tire squad may take space marine bikes for 35 points each. They can take melt bomb, storm shield, bunch of veteration. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, next, the generic librarian. Uh, he's a mastery level one. You can upgrade him to master level two for 25 points. He's only 65 points, that's amazing. The librarians have gone down significantly in price. It used to be 100, now they're 65. So if you just give an extra 25 points, right? So they're at 90 now, you have a master level two librarian. Pretty nice. Uh, same stats as before li uh, librarians. They can take biomancy, pyromancy, telekinesis, and telepathy. That's amazing. So you could have biomancy. A strength seven, toughness seven, eternal warrior librarian. Sounds good to me for 90 points. I like. However, Abor of the Witch, librarians may not be included in detachments of Black Templars. That makes sense, right? You can't, you can't, you can't have librarians with Templars. That just doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't make any sense. Uh, up next, the Chaplain. Once again, small decrease, 100 points down to 90. Same stats before as the Chaplains. And pretty much the same rules. They've just gotten slightly cheaper. That's good stuff. Uh, Master of the Forge, 90 points. Master of the Forge used to be 70, went up by 20. 
Uh, Lord of Armory, if the attachment includes a Master of the Forge, Dreadnoughts, Venerable Dreadnoughts, and Ironclad Dreadnoughts may be taken as heavy support choices as well as elite choices in that attachment. That's pretty fun. So you could take six Dreadnoughts if you want. Six Ironclads running down the field. Good and toit. That's pretty fun. Uh, there's a Tech Marine, 50 points. My dog is being noisy. Tech Marine for 50 points is a standard Tech Marine. Duplo save, and he can fix things, he can take Servitors. So that's basically it. I'm really sorry for rushing through the last couple just because they're the not, they're the pretty much generic ones that haven't changed that much. So thank you very much for watching part two of this in-depth review of the new Space Marine Codex. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below if you have anything to add or if I missed anything. Um, I really hope that it creates a good discussion. And uh, yeah, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. And stay tuned for part three in which I will be going over the elite section of this really awesome codex. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.